guys are looking to get some aquarium shrimp, whether it's neocaridina or caridina, then one of the things that you really need to know about is proper acclimation. Believe it or not, this is one of the most important factors when ensuring that these little guys make it into your aquarium safely. And it also ensures that they're gonna thrive in their home. And so without proper acclimation, a lot of things can go wrong, a lot of things can happen. Obviously planning and having the proper setup for these little guys is very important as well. But acclimation is one of those things that you can really make a mistake at if you don't know what you're doing. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know for acclimating these little guys, whether it's caridina shrimp, neocaridina shrimp, it doesn't matter. It applies to all acclimation. It could even be used for fish, nano fish, snails, anything and all the above. This is a great way you can acclimate any new livestock for your aquarium. What is going on, Shrimp Keepers? This is Rob at FlipAquatics.com if you've never been here before. And today, I'm gonna to take some time to teach you everything that I know about proper shrimp acclimation. Again, it doesn't matter if it's caridine or neocaridine. It doesn't matter if they're extremely hardy shrimp or very sensitive shrimp. It's all very important to learn these few key tips to acclimating your shrimp properly. Now, a little bit about Flip Aquatics. We're the number one online retailer of freshwater shrimp in the United States. We import probably 100, 200,000 shrimp yearly. So we have a lot of experience with proper shrimp acclimation. So I wanna take a couple minutes of your time and teach you everything that I know and all the success that I've had with proper shrimp acclimation. So hopefully you guys can take that knowledge and apply it to your home aquarium so that you guys can have just as much success as we have here at Flip Aquatics. Okay, so you just got your shrimp in the mail. The first thing you're gonna do is actually open up your box, take the shrimp out and set them most likely in your fish room or in the room that the tank is located in. Uh, here at Flip Aquatics, we actually send an acclimation card with every single order, which has six steps and kind of briefly explains what you need to do. Now we're gonna go much more in depth with each one of these steps. This is just a guide to briefly explain how to acclimate shrimp in case someone has never seen this video or has never talked to us. They at least have a guide to go off of. So in this case, we actually have what is called blue bull shrimp, which are Taiwan bees. Uh, they're considered to be a little bit more difficult, but they're actually pretty hardy. We have two different bags here, which we're gonna explain this in a little bit, but just for a quick reference, this one is a breather bag, and this one is a normal bag. So you can notice that there's actually air inside of this bag. Halfway um, is full of air, and the other half is full of water. This one, there's no air at all. And so we'll explain this in a little bit. But the absolute first thing you want to do after you take them out of the box or you get them home from the store is you want to ensure there's no death. So we're going to look at these very closely. Looks like we still have six. I mean, a couple of them are underneath this um, mesh that we put in our bags. Now, the reason we put mesh in there is so that the shrimp have something to hold on to. And so we're just going to make sure we're going to kind of spin it around. I don't see. It looks like they're all still good. And so no death. So that's very important. Now, in these other bags, it's a little bit harder to see. But usually the dead ones will float right to the bottom. It doesn't look like we have any, so that's a really, really good sign. So let's say, worst case scenario, you just got your shrimp in. There's maybe two dead in there. Maybe there's uh, 10 alive, something like that. You're going to want to get them out of that bag as quick as possible. Now, do not panic because we need to remain calm at all times. But I'm going to give you a few tools that we use here to ensure that the shrimp that we do get in, if there's something wrong with the bag, we're going to give them the best chance for survival. And so the tools that you need to have is... Um, you could use either one of these. We use both. Um, Fritz, now these are both sponsored of our channel, so do know that. But these are great products to use in this situation. Uh, this is called ACCR, which is Ammonia Chlorine Chloramine Remover. And this one is called Shrimp Primp, and this is by Brightwell. Now the big thing to know about these is they're going to detoxify ammonia. So if you have dead shrimp in the bag, what's going to happen is the ammonia has built up and is actually toxic, toxic in the water, which could kill the rest of your shrimp. So you can't just take your shrimp out of here and put them into your aquarium water because that could cause more harm than good. So what we need to do is neutralize any ammonia that could be in the water. So you need a container, and I personally prefer the dip and pours. I think these are by Lee's, and we use these all the time. So I prefer these because they hang on the side of the tank, and we'll get to that reason in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to set these guys in here. I'm going to cut the top off and put them into this catch cup or dip and pour, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll show you the next step from there. Okay, so we just added the shrimp into the dip and pour. Now, obviously, the first thing that you're going to want to do is get all the dead ones out, but that's not your first step. The first thing you're going to want to do is take this and literally just put a tiny little squirt in there because it's not a ton of water. Like, that's probably more than enough. 
Now the reason we do that is that's actually going to neutralize any ammonia that's in the water. Um, now that we're we're pretty confident that the ammonia is neutralized, um, I like to stir the water. So if I have a net, I'll stir the water real good to make sure that all the ammonia is neutralized. And then I'll go through and I'll start taking out any dead ones. So once all dead shrimp are removed, uh, you don't want to go float this in your aquarium. You don't want to do anything like that. The next step is actually the most important step out of every step, and I'm going to show you why. You're going to laugh, but this is actually one of the most important tools in our entire fish room. And what this is, this is actually a temperature probe. So this is made to be stuck into meat to read the center of the meat temperature. So you can see right now it's saying it's 64.6 degrees. So that's pretty cold. So we're gonna assume that that's the temperature of this water. Now let's go over to where we're gonna put the shrimp and we're putting them into this aquarium. Now when we read this temperature, we'll give it a second. Okay, so our temperature is actually sitting at 68.2 degrees. So with that, where there's about a four degree difference. So with a four degree difference, the biggest thing to know about these little shrimp is they do not tolerate changes in parameters very good. Uh, especially temperatures. So you don't want to shock these shrimp. So if you were to just catch these out and throw them into a tank that was four degrees warmer, most likely they're all going to try to molt, which means that most of them could die due to failed molts. And you don't want that to happen. So this next part, while it's the hardest part to really follow because most people that get new shrimp in, they're super excited to put these shrimp into new tanks. You're going to want to let these guys sit here for about four to six hours or at least long enough to get their temperature within range. I'd probably say within four degrees of where you're putting them. Now, I know that we just talked about four degrees and we can't add them right in, but there's a process to put these in there safely without changing the temperature rapidly. Now, if there are no deaths in the bags, there's no reason to add the shrimp to a container like this. So in that case, it's good to just let them sit in the bag. The reason being is this is what we call a breather bag. Now, a breather bag is a bag that has an equal exchange of oxygen to carbon dioxide. Now, if you feel this, it actually has like a silky feel to it, and it has a tint to it. It's not as clear as these guys were in their original bag. So this is obviously just a plastic bag. There's air in it. So this one, it has no oxygen exchange, or it might, not have, it might have a little bit, but not a lot. These actually have a very good exchange. The worst thing you could ever do is float a breather bag. When you float a breather bag, you actually cut off the oxygen exchange and suffocate the shrimp inside. So it's good to know never to float this in an aquarium unless it's for less than 30 minutes at a time. Now shrimp in a cup, um, I know the big thing that could happen is, you know, you could run the risk of the oxygen depleting in there. So it's good to have as much surface area as possible. If you do get nervous about this, you can add an air stone to a cup like this. The only thing is you don't want to add too much flow because it will stress out the shrimp. So just like a bubble per second or a bubble every two seconds, something like that, just to get surface agitation will be more than enough, especially if you're going to have to leave the shrimp for more than 12 hours at a time. Now, these shrimp in here would probably be good for about 12 hours to 24 hours with no risk of anything going wrong. Sometimes we've forgotten about shrimp like this and left them over the weekend. We came back the following Monday and they were completely fine. Now, if you guys are looking to get any tools that I'm listing here in the video, I'll put all the links down below. None of them will be affiliate links. Some of them will probably be back to our website. And so obviously that could be considered an affiliate link, but I'll link these on like Amazon and we don't have an affiliate links for that. So feel free to check those out and get some for yourself. So one thing that I did not talk about is how to take the temperature of a bag that is not open yet. So what you can do is you can literally go by feel. So right now we'll say it's reading 69.7. We'll just put it up to the bag. And so the bag's actually sitting at 70 degrees. Now another thing you could do, you could actually even poke a small hole in there. And that's one way that you can test the temperature. And you could actually just leave the probe in there for a little while. And so that's one way that you could do it. Another thing is if you really wanted to, you could empty them into a bin, test the temperature that way. But it's really important to know the temperature of the shrimp that you got in because again, you really don't want any more than like a two to three degree change over an hour. Anything more than that, you can really start seeing issues. Okay, so for time's sake, it's roughly four to six hours later. The shrimp are still doing good. And now we're on to the next task. Again, it's safe to say anything within four degrees is okay to start the next process. Now, if your water's at 60 degrees and your tank, your aquarium water's at 72, then you're gonna wanna wait another four to six hours just to ensure that the poor shrimp get to their home safely. The next tool you're gonna need is what we call an acclimation kit. It's roughly two to three feet of airline hose. It comes with a little clamp. 
And we sell these on our website. We really, really recommend them. You can make your own little DIY thing. They're not very hard. All you need is a valve, a clip, and some airline, and you're gonna be good to go. But we're gonna carry this over to the aquarium. I'm gonna show you why I love using these containers so much. So like I said earlier, these containers actually hang on the side of the aquarium, which makes it really neat or really easy for acclimation purposes. And I'm gonna show you why. But we got our acclimation kit set up. We got it going down into the water. That's gonna be plenty fine. We have the opposite end. And so to start a siphon, all you're gonna do is um, suck on the end of this hose to actually get the water to come down. As soon as you see the water crest up here, you're good and you don't have to continuously suck because you don't wanna get aquarium water in your mouth. Now there's other safe ways to do this. Uh, you can submerge this whole line underwater until it's all the air is out. And then you could put it in there and that's gonna get the siphon automatically. I just prefer the old OG way of doing it and just start siphon myself. Okay, so we just got the siphon started. Uh, we got, I don't know, maybe a dri two drips every second, which is a little fast, but we know the temperature is pretty much equal. So what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna wait until this water doubles in size. Now, the cool thing about having these hang on the back or hang on the side dip and pours is the water level for the aquarium is right here. Now that means that this tank can never rise above that point. So if you leave this and walk away, your dip and pour will never overflow because it's just getting siphoned from here. So it can never rise above this level or it would start dripping back in. And so that's one really cool thing to know. So that's why I love using these. But we're literally just gonna let this run until this reaches the same height as the tank. In other words, we're gonna wait until this amount of water doubles in size. That means that 50% tank water, 50% the water they arrived in, and then we're gonna to go to the next step of acclimation. Okay, so this process usually takes about an hour, maybe two hours. As you can see, our water stopped right at the level of the aquarium, which is really nice, so there's no risk of overflowing on the floor or anything like that. Now granted, if this was setting on the ground and it filled up, then yes, it could definitely overflow. Uh, the big thing is to make sure that the top of this is equal with the aquarium and you still got some room to play with, if that makes sense. So what you're gonna wanna do now is not just take this cup and pour it in. You're actually gonna wanna go get a net and catch these shrimp out of there. I prefer not to put this piece of cloth in there because you know, depending on the seller, you never know what kind of bacteria could be transferred on that. So it's always good to just get that out of there and just put the shrimp in themselves. You wanna limit the amount of bacteria that's going into your tank unless it's a brand newly set up tank. If this is a brand new tank that has nothing in it, then you could technically add this stuff in, although you know the ammonia that's in there, stuff like that, you necessarily don't wanna add it in. So for the purposes of this video, we'll say never add the bag water to your aquarium, always take it out. So we're gonna grab a net, we're gonna catch these shrimp, and then we're gonna release them into their new home. So I got my net and I actually use what's called a 3D net. Now what this means is it's actually a box and the reason we use that is because with shrimp, sometimes this netting will actually collapse on the shrimp and make them really hard to get out of the net. I'm sure I'm gonna show you that in this video. Now I did remove the, the netting that the shrimp can hold onto during shipping, uh, just to make it a little bit easier because I'm filming, obviously I can't even get it into the cup at the same time. And so I'm just gonna scoop these guys out of here. Now if you have round bowls, you might wanna get a round net, but we use a lot of square things like these catch, uh, catch cups or dipping pours, whatever you wanna call them. And so I'm gonna put them in there and they're, Actually, those ones came out pretty quick, so I'm pretty surprised. But if that netting would have closed in on them, it would have made it a lot harder. And then we have one left, so let me try to get him out. And then just put him back in. See, there he goes. So now the shrimp are in their home. And on to the final step. Now that is how you properly acclimate shrimp. Now there is still one more step, and the biggest step is to sit back, enjoy your shrimp, and love the hobby. Now, in the rare, unfortunate event that you still have some issues, um, make sure that you let the company know that you purchased them from. I know here at Flip Aquatics, we always guarantee our shrimp, uh, whether they come in bad, whether two, two days later they die, like it doesn't matter. Always reach out to the company and tell them what's going on, and I guarantee they'll always try to make it right. So, above all else, sit back, enjoy your shrimp, and enjoy this amazing hobby. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I hope that you all learned something. Hopefully you can take some piece of advice out of this video and apply it to your own fish room. Whether you're getting fish in, shrimp in, um, snails, it doesn't matter. This acclimation could be applied to any living creature that goes inside your aquarium. So good luck with your future acclimation. Consider us for your next shrimp purchase here at Flip Aquatics. We'd really appreciate it. And you guys make it an absolute amazing day. And as always, God bless.